let's talk about why, why LED versus fluorescent. Um, today, LED efficacy is exceeding fluorescent. And we'll talk about what that means a little bit more when we say that from this graph, this is the actual LED package. So the individual LED run itself, so we'll talk about what happens when you put it in the system. But by itself, uh, compared to fluorescent lamps, uh, in, in this graph, essentially what you see is the fluorescent range of 60 to 100 lumens per watt. LEDs in late 2010, 102, or actually today we're seeing all the way up to 120 lumens per watt. So you know, LEDs continue to accelerate. The, the green curve is essentially what we're forecasting in the future, which you can see it just is going to keep going up and up and up. Uh, the, the impact of that, though, is that it keeps enabling the, the technology to, to further save energy in addition to the maintenance savings. Okay? But if you look at the trajectory, it's, a, it's quite amazing stuff, and we really have been following that, that curve. So about every 18 months, um, really makes a huge shift in improvements of LED efficacy which also is why the reason why you see a lot of products changing very quickly within the industry of how do you take advantage of the new LED with the new brightness and lower watts. We talked about this a little bit, uh, but how do we slash maintenance costs? Maintenance costs for payback on LEDs, um, replacements for cabinet signs, is going to be the biggest part of your ROI. Okay? We talk a lot about energy, but maintenance is the lion's share of how you justify switching to LED. For LED, we talked about 50,000 hours. Again, at the end of 50,000 hours, those LEDs are still lit. That sign's still lit, it just may be 30% dimmer than it was when we started. For a T12 or T12HO, um, you, you've already, for that same cycle, you've already replaced the lamps four times. It may have been on a relamp cycle, it may have been on an individual replacing lamps one at a time as they go out. Um, but there's, there's been a lot of trucks going out to the site then to replace these. And again, that's again understanding maintenance. Because if, if signs are low to the ground and, and it's just the store um, store manager or store store clerk going out and replacing bulbs themselves because they can access it, there's not going to be a lot of payback. But if you have to get the bucket truck and, and have and the, the end user or retailer has to pay to have the truck come out, that's where the maintenance payback comes in. Okay, let's switch over to cold weather. So that's another advantage, another advantage of, of LED uh, is that it doesn't use the mercury in the fluorescent lamp. The mercury in the fluorescent lamp is highly dependent upon uh, temperature. So if you think about the fluorescent lamp as the tube, it's almost a rough vacuum. It's, it's very low pressure inside. And literally the mercury um, uh, inside the lamp floats, so to speak. It just is, is uh, in vapor form and the mercury is what conducts the electrons back and forth between the cathodes at each end. It actually holds the current as it goes through. So as fluorescent lamps get colder, more and more mercury condenses out. It's called the cold spot line. The mercury literally condenses into sometimes a glow cloud or sometimes just a ball at the end, but it's not available to carry the current inside the fluorescent lamp. Which what happens is then, as it gets colder, so in this graph it gets, it's getting colder as it goes farther to the right, you start to see a, a, a massive drop off in light output from the fluorescent as it gets colder. And I think you know, everyone um, has, has seen that before. Um, the LED, the reason the LED graph, so the, the, the purple line for the LED actually goes up as it gets colder. Again, as we were talking about, LEDs actually get more efficient as it gets colder. So LEDs in the wintertime are going to be slightly brighter typically than they are in the, in the summertime. Whereas Fluorescents take a huge hit in terms of efficiency as they get cold. They really, uh, the, the pressure inside the fluorescent lamp, the, 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 the fill and everything else inside, those are optimized for indoor room temperature. 77 degrees Fahrenheit is basically where those, that design is optimized for. So it really was never intended for, for outdoor type applications. And the, the other advantage to it then is between, on the left you see some pictures that we can see this today. On the left you see um, T12HO fluorescent, and then on the right LED system. It's actually kind of hard to see a little bit, but the difference is we, we, put, we actually took these pictures, we put it inside of, of one of our walk-in. Um, it's 
it's almost like a walk-in freezer. Essentially, put put the signs in. So, what are they at room temperature, and then measure them when they're when it gets you know, set down colder, and you you see uh, the effect their intensity. Okay, and the other part is the uniform.